These are the brand new Nike Victory Tour 3 golf shoes. And in this video today, I'm going to tell you five things that you need to know about these golf shoes. These are premium golf shoes in the Nike range. And in terms of the looks, Nike have gone for a bit of a hybrid. They're a traditional looking shoe, kind of, but they've certainly got an athletic, sporty look about them as well. The first key thing that you need to know about these shoes are the fit. I would say that these are true to size although they are quite a narrow foot and there's not a huge amount of room above your toes. It is quite a shallow toe box. The second thing you need to know about these shoes is their comfort. Nike have done something pretty unique with these shoes. Although they look like quite a traditional styling, they've got a lot going on in terms of what they're doing to make these shoes nice and comfortable. What they've done is actually stitch a substantial size air zoom pad in the forefoot area here and they've stitched it to the upper and it actually sits kind of on top of the strobel so you've got a full length plate going underneath and then what you've got is the air zoom pocket sitting on top of that and you can really feel the softness and the kind of squishiness of that air zoom under the ball of your foot. So to make sure that you don't feel the pad unit kind of sticking up from the top of the strobel what Nike have actually done is cut a recess out of the insole of the, of the shoe there. You can see here, that this section here is where that pad sits. Now in previous versions, Nike had their React foam in the heel in this section. For these shoes, it seems like they've taken that out and just replaced it with a more regular standard foam at the heel. Now, that's not a huge, huge issue. I didn't particularly notice the softness in the previous version of these shoes, and I haven't noticed that they've changed the foam at the back. It's still comfortable enough. I've got to say that I was pretty impressed with the comfort around the ankle and around the heel as well. You've got a nice amount of padding there, feels nice and soft, and walking 18 holes on the course straight away out of the box, I didn't have any problems with these. I didn't get any blisters. Now you haven't really got any padding at all on this tongue section here. It's just right up against the lever of the shoe. I didn't find it uncomfortable. It's not the most comfortable that I've ever tried on the top part of your foot, but it doesn't really need to be because that lever is actually plenty soft enough that it kind of molds and sits nicely on top of your foot. One other thing when it comes to comfort on these shoes, Nike have put quite a sizable internal strap that runs through the laces so it goes so the laces go in the upper and then it goes through this strap and then the whole, whole idea of that is that it's pulling that material kind of over the top of your foot and locking it down personally i'm not feeling a huge benefit from that i didn't really notice it was there others with bigger feet have tended to have a little bit of a problem with that strap because it was on previous versions of the shoe and it can kind of sit a little bit uncomfortably if you catch it you've got to make sure that it's sitting nice and flush across the top of your foot. The third key thing you need to know about these shoes is how waterproof they are. So using them out on the course in kind of regular conditions, a little bit of rain and stuff like that, no problems whatsoever. I did my full waterproof test on these, which meant I poured 300 milliliters of water over the upper as well as over the bottom part of this tongue section. And you can see here that a little bit of water did creep through the eyelets of the laces and the bottom of the tongue. There's no gusset at the bottom of this tongue. It just goes straight through to the top of your foot. So if you get caught in really heavy conditions or you step in a puddle, then your feet are gonna get a little bit wet. But generally, I would say for most golfers, in most conditions, you're not really gonna have any problems. If you are thinking about buying them, then I've included any links in the description below, along with any discount code, so hopefully you can pick them up for less than retail price. The fourth thing you need to know about these shoes are the grip and the traction. So these have got seven cleats here on them. So you can see you've got two at the rear and then five across the midfoot to the toe. So I've not really seen this done too much before on Nike shoes, I think maybe it's the first time, in that they've actually split the different types of cleats on the sole of the shoe. So you can see here on the lateral side, you've got these two here that match the two at the heel. And then you've got these three on the medial side. I hope I'm getting them the right way around. I think so. On the inside, you can see here that you've got slightly different cleats. I'm not gonna go into the full technical details of what these cleats are trying to do. Obviously, they're trying to give you more grip and traction, and I would assume they're trying to help you kind of rotate in the proper way, given that they're located on the inside of the shoe here. Did I notice any difference in terms of the traction and the performance of these shoes compared to any others that I've tested? No, not really. 
I'd say that these gave me all the grip that I needed, which is what I would expect from a pair of cleated golf shoes. These ripples there probably aren't really giving you anything in the way of additional grip and traction, although they are certainly help giving you extra stability with these shoes. There's not a whole lot of flex in them, but there's you know enough flex in the toe box, but you, you know, you've got a pretty good amount of stability in these shoes. You don't sit as close to the ground as some other spiked golf shoes, something like the FootJoy Premier Series. With these, because you've got that air pocket in the front and you've got quite a lot of midsole foam at the heel here, you do feel that you are sitting kind of tall in these shoes. Not to the point that I felt uncomfortable, but definitely something that you wanna make sure that you are comfortable with, especially if you're spending all that money on these shoes. I'd say they feel pretty similar to something like the FootJoy Hyperflex Carbon in terms of the height off of the floor. Clearly, it's not that big of a deal for all the PGA professionals. These are currently being worn by Rory McIlroy. That being said, he could probably wear a pair of slippers and beat me by 20 strokes. 30, probably. Maybe 40. The last thing I think you need to know about these shoes is their price. In the US, these are $180, which is roughly where I'd expect them to be priced. Here in the UK, they're 205 pounds. I'm not really sure why there's such a big discrepancy there between those two prices. And at 205 pounds, these feel somewhat overpriced. If you compare them to the FootJoy Hyperflex Carbon, they retail for 180 pounds. Or the FootJoy Premier Series, they retail for 170 pounds. I even found the customizable Tarlos at 130 pounds at the moment on the FootJoy website. Or let's take a look at another brand, the Adidas Tour 360 2022 editions, then they retail again for around 160 pounds. Are these shoes worth the additional 55 pounds compared to some of those other shoes? I'm not entirely sure they are. I think they're a little bit overpriced. They are a very comfortable pair of golf shoes. I'm not gonna deny that. And you're probably paying for the technology and the tooling to make that possible. But does that money equate to significant extra comfort or extra performance? Not really, not in my opinion anyway. So if you like the look of these shoes, then fantastic. If you're happy to pay that extra premium for them, then I think you're gonna be pretty happy with these golf shoes. They certainly feel pretty premium. They're nice and comfortable. And I think they've got a great look. These are definitely Nike's, I would say most premium and traditional looking golf shoes while still having that sporty Nike vibe. You're getting a full leather upper, which is quite nice and soft to be fair. Although you can expect quite a bit of creasing that comes with that softness. You can see it's already started here across the toes for me. And there's a few textures to this leather as well. So you can see you've got this very small pin prick pattern here on a grid kind of layout across the toe on both the inside and the outside. And then as you move to the back, then actually it then becomes this more rolled leather pattern there or tumbled leather. You can see that there and you've got it on the inside as well. As I mentioned, I've included any links down in the description below so you can pick these up hopefully for less than retail price. And if you have found this video helpful, make sure you smash that like button and make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can keep up to date with all my latest golf shoe and tech reviews. And if you are looking for a modern sporty pair of comfortable premium golf shoes, then why not check out my full review of the FootJoy Hyperflex Carbon Golf Shoes, which I've included a link to right here.